Today's golden nugget from the prayers of the psalmist is not so much a Bible study as an encouragement. We're looking at a psalm of King David, and it's a prayer of absolute desperation. In Psalm 13 and verse 1, King David prays, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? It's a cry from the heart. This is a visceral, a, a guttural prayer. It's a prayer that comes from deep within. There's no wonderful theology in this prayer. There's no uh, praying the prayer of faith kind of prayer. This is just, God, where are you? I need help. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? It's an absolute cry of desperation, but that does not make it any less powerful a prayer than any of the other prayers that King David prays throughout the Psalms. This in itself is an amazingly powerful prayer because this is a prayer that God will listen to. When Jesus crossed over the Sea of Galilee to the shores of the lake and to, to the land of the Gerasenes where he encountered the man who was possessed by a legion of demons. It tells us in the scriptures that that man used to cry out daily. What was that man crying out? I believe that that man was crying out to God for help. He knew that everything was wrong. It was a dark place. It was a wretched place. He was possessed by a legion of demons, but he was crying out daily. And I believe that that is why Jesus was sent by the Father. Remember, Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Jesus crossed that lake because the Father directed him to that place where the man was crying out. If you are crying out in the midst of darkness today I have good news for you my friend God hears your cry God hears your cry and he understands your cry when Jesus hung on the cross as he bled and died so that we can be forgiven of our sin and born again of the Spirit of God it tells us in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 45 from the sixth hour until the ninth hour there was darkness over all the land and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying Eli Eli lama sabachthani that is my God my God why have you forsaken me we do not have a God who doesn't understand what it is like to be in that place of darkness because Jesus went to that place for us. And when we cry out to God, my God, my God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Or even just God help. God hears that cry. Whatever situation you're in, God will hear your cry. You don't have to wrap it up in wonderful theology. If you need help, if you don't know what's going on, if you're in a place of darkness, you can cry out, my God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And God will hear that cry. The wonderful thing about this psalm is that God hears David's cry. And the situation does not change. We don't see from one, the, the, from the beginning of the psalm to the end of the psalm that David's situation changes. But when we come to verse 5, we see that God has heard David's cry and he has placed a faith in David's heart. He has brought David back to a place where David can say this. Verse 5, I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The situation hasn't changed, but God has given David that reassurance in his heart that no matter, no matter how dark the situation may be, no matter how desperate the situation may be, that God has heard his prayer, that God is with him even in the middle of that struggle. May God bring you to that place today where you can cry out to God, help me, Lord, I need you. 
and allow God to bring you to that place where you, even in the middle of darkness, can declare, I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. God is with you in your situation and he will bring you to that place of faith and rejoicing even in the middle of trials, even in the middle of terrible circumstances. When you cry to him, God, help me. I don't know where you are, but he will bring you to that place where you say, I trust you. And so I can rejoice. God bless you. Bye bye.